In this video, we're going to take a look at the concept of what a probability distribution is. And in the example I'm going to use is uh, when you toss two standard six-sided dice. And so this is my two dice table, I call it. And uh, across the top is one through six, and across the side is one through six. And so this shows all the possible sums that you could get when throwing two dice. So for example, one and one add to two, that's the smallest sum. 6 and 6 add to 12, that's the largest possible sum. And then all the other sums in between. So for example, I get 4 and 1 dice, maybe we'll call it the red dice, and 3 on the blue dice, uh, 4 and 3 add to 7. So there's uh, one of the possible outcomes. And on the in this table on the left side here, the uppercase X represents the name of the random variable. I'm just calling it X. The lowercase x represents all the outcomes. So the outcomes vary from 2, a sum of 2, up to a sum of 12. And so that's what's underneath, underneath the little x. So for example, sum of 2 can only happen in one way. There's a 1 in this dice, and a 1 in this dice, and they add to 2. So there's only one chance in 36 of getting a sum of 2. There are two ways to get a sum of 3. It could be a 1 and a 2, or a 2 and a 1. So notice there are two 3's here. So I'll put these all here now. So there's two chances in 36 of getting a sum of 3, which reduces to 1 and 18. The sum of 4 can happen in three ways. We could have a 3 and a 1, a 2 and a 2, or a 1 to 3. And so there's three chances in 36 of getting a sum of 4, which reduces to 1 over 12. The sum of 5, if you look here, 1, 2, 3, 4 ways it can occur. So 4 chances in 36 would be we reduces to 1 and 9. The 6, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 ways for a sum of 6 can occur, to occur, and that one doesn't reduce, so I'll just leave it as 5 over 36. The 7, there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 ways out of 36 to get a sum of 7, which reduces to 1 over 6. And then as you start going down the table on this side, you'll notice that the probabilities start uh, uh, duplicating again. So for example, the 6 and the 8 both have 5 chances in 36. There's 5 ways of getting a 6, and there's 5 ways of, of getting an 8. Uh, the same with the 9 and the 5. There's 4 ways of getting each of those. So for example, here's the 5, 1, 2, 3, 4. The 9, the same, 1, 2, 3, 4. And so uh, 4 chances in 36 reduces to 1 ninth, and then 3, 2, and 1. So that's the probabilities of the 10, 11, and 12 reduced. And so if I illustrate these on a histogram, and what I did was uh, I made this is this and, and this down here in Excel. And so I'm going to bring my calculator over here. So one chance in 36 was my probability for the sum of 2, which is 0.27 repeating. And in fact, I guess I could go in here and we'll get it to round to four decimal places. I like to leave probabilities to four decimal places. So we'll do the same thing again. So there's my 0 0.0278. Uh, 1 over 18, 1 divided by 18 is 0 0.05 repeating, so 0 0.0556. Uh, 1 chance in 12, that's the last one, 0 0.083 repeating, so 0 0.0833, that's that one. And so there's all the probabilities. So I, I, I changed into decimal form before I drew my histogram in Excel. So here's my probability histogram here. So that's what this is called. The table and the probability histogram are two of the most frequently used ways of illustrating a probability distribution. And they're most useful. The nice thing about the table is you can very quickly look at it and tell what the probability is. The problem with the histogram, you have to approximate a bit. So for example, the sum of 6, and it looks like it's just under 0.14. And uh, you can see that 0.1389, okay, but it's be more nice to have the table here rather than approximating from a histogram. So that's basically uh, what a probability distribution looks like. And so let's flip over to another page here. Create the probability distribution for the number of heads when three coins are tossed. And so here's the uh, tree diagram for tossing three, coin, uh, uh, a co uh, three coins or a coin three times. Same thing. You get a head and a tail in the first, and then a head and tail in the second, head and a tail in the third roll or the third coin. So there's all the possibilities. And they would all be equally likely. There's eight of them. So um, the value of the, well, I'm going to introduce a term, a random variable. Um, the variable's the variable's name is actually that capital letter X.
The probability distribution is how you illustrate it, but these are actually what are called random variables. And in this case, the, uh, the random variable is the number of heads when we flip the coin three times or toss three different coins. And so the random variable can have, have a value of no heads, zero heads, one head, two heads, or all three could be heads. And we get these probabilities from looking at our tree diagram over here. So the probability of the random variable is equal to x is, and zero is the first one here, there's only one way we can get zero heads. And so that would have a chance of one chance in eight of happening because there's only one of, here, one of these here, eight, that have no heads whatsoever. The probability that we get one, uh, there's one head here, one head here, and there's, a, where, there's an event with one head. So there's three chances in eight of that happening. Two heads, well, there's one here, two, three, so there's three chances in eight of that happening. And then the only way you can get uh, all three heads is the HHH, which is one chance in eight again. Now, another um, terminology here, uh, expected value. Expected value, you take the... Uh, each outcome and multiply by its probability and add those all, those all up. Uh, there's another name for this expected value. It's also called a weighted mean or a weighted average. And so to calculate it, we'll take 0 times 1 eighth plus 1 times 3 eighths plus 2 times 3 eighths plus 3 times 1 eighth. And so we'll do the arithmetic. So 0 times an eighth would, of course, be 0. 1 times 3 eighths would be 3 eighths. Uh, when you're multiplying 2 by 3 eighths, now remember the 2 actually has a denominator of 1. So if you think of that as 2 over 1, the 2 times the 3 is the 6 here. The 1 times the 8 in the bottom is this 8. And the same with the 3. The 3 has a denominator of 1. And so 3 times 1 is 3 on top, 1 times 8 is 8 in the bottom. Now if you add these up, 3, 6, and 3 adds to 12. So this would add to 12 over 8, and that divides out to 1.5. And so that's the expected value here. It, so 1.5, of course, is halfway between 1 and 2. So you should expect to get between one an average of 1 and 2 uh, heads if you did this a lot of times. So that's the expected value. Uh, one more uh, page here, an example. Uh, a local charity raffles tickets off on a draw to raise money for their cause. Uh, the first prize is $500, is one of those. And there are three $100 prizes and then 25, 10 $25 prizes. And they sell 1,000 tickets. So A says determine the probability distribution. And so um, there's three different outcomes here, 500 or three different prizes, 500, 1,000, and, and $25. So in the table, we would put those um, under X because that's what X could be. You could, you could win $500, $100, or $25. Now, to calculate the probabilities of each, there's only one first prize. So you have one chance in 1,000 of getting the 500, which divides out to 0 0.001. There's three chances to get $100, so three chances in 1,000 to get that. So 0 0.003 is the probability of winning $100. And then there's 10 $25 prizes, so 10 over... 1,000 is 0 0.01. So uh, now we're going to calculate this expected value next. So we will go 500 times 0 0.01 plus 1,000 times 0 0.03 plus the 25 times 0 0.01. So each outcome times its probability. So if you multiply 500 by 0 0.01, that is 50 cents. Uh, 100 times 0 0.03 is 30 cents, 0 0.30, because this is actually money. And 25 times 0 0.01 is 25 cents. So if you add the three of those up, you get a dollar five. So what the expected value represents here is the expected winnings per ticket. So if you buy a ticket in this 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 charity from this lottery, the only things you can actually win are 500, 100, or 25 dollars. But on average, they would have to be paying out a dollar five per ticket. That's what it averages out to. So when it says, would it be reasonable for the charity to charge a dollar per ticket? It wouldn't really be because, you see, if they're charging a dollar per ticket and selling a thousand tickets, they're only actually taking in a thousand dollars. Well, if they're paying 500 out, let's bring the calculator back over here. If they're paying $500 out for first prize and then $300 prizes, that'd be $300. 
and then they have your there's ten twenty five dollar prizes so that's two hundred and fifty that actually be paying out a thousand fifty so it wouldn't make sense for them to charge a dollar a ticket they'd actually be losing money it would be more reasonable let's actually do put my answer statement here so the charity would not be wise to charge a dollar per ticket since the payout is actually a dollar five per ticket so it would be more reasonable for them to charge maybe two dollars or more of course you can't charge too much nobody will buy them you want to you know oh well, let's sell these for twenty dollars a piece and we'll make lots of money well nobody's going to buy them if the, or not too many people buy them if the main, main price is only five hundred dollars so a couple a little bit of terminology before we end here a these were all examples of what are called discrete random variables because the random variable has a countable number of outcomes there are three outcomes here 500 100 or 25 in the example with the dice uh, the outcomes well there's 36 different roles but there's only um, let's see now 11 different sums from 2 to 12 um, in the example with the uh, coins in the last page um, you could get 0 1 2 or 3 heads so there's only four different outcomes there so those are all examples of what are called discrete random variables because the outcomes are something countable a continuous random variable that we'll talk about later on uh, is a random variable which has can assume a, a measurable outcome. So, for example, the heights of uh, people in a room, or the masses of people in the room, or the times that uh, you know you stop at a traffic light, how long you stop for, anywhere from you know nothing to you know 10 minutes or whatever it might be. Uh, there's an infinite number of measurable times there or measurable heights or measurable masses uh, so that's a continuous those are examples of a continuous random variable where I'm only going to be talking about discrete random variables here and then the lessons that uh, come after this one and that's the end of the video